The Soul Detox series that we have begun, I believe, will make major impact in our church and will help us to reach another level of maturity. I'm very practical in my preaching. Anyone that's been coming for 11 years knows I'm very practical. I believe you get the word of God, then you have to be able to reflect and help you take next steps, which means you don't, you can't come in journey under my preaching and under the teaching and all the singing and crying and emotionalism that we give. If we don't get better by what we hear, you have not benefited by the word. Amen. So you must be intentional as you go into any class. And I talked about these students here. We celebrate student ministry. Those that have been in school and know that if you prepare to go in, if you have a class and if you prepare to go in and say, I'm looking for that which I'm going to take away to help me better, there are chances to be better. There are chances that when you leave, you would have retained some information. You will be better. Soul detox. There's a chance for us to make a list and to begin to reflect on the areas of our lives that we need to detox. I thank Minister Quick last Sunday for being here. He did a great job in preaching as he always does and he is duly trained and equipped and he can take that text and wherever I hand the wand, I've always explained to him it's like a relay at journey, amen. So wherever I am, I expect to hand the wand to you, the baton, and you take it a lap, amen. Take it a lap, don't lose the lead, praise God. If you come and stand in this pulpit, don't lose the lead for me now. You know, those of us that know baseball, amen, batter up, don't get up there and strike out. At least, at least get what, Perry? At least get a base hit. Get on base. Hey, I can take it on home. But get on base. Don't lose the lead. And he did, but he talked last week about some of the lethal language, and he gave a list. I was watching, and uh, the maid was trying to get us out of the room because it was time to check out. And I was watching and trying to pack, and the maid was knocking at the door, and, and <laughs> praise the Lord. I'm glad because they were rushing me. I said, I thought I had late checkout. They said, no, you got to check out with everybody else. And, uh, and so I, he told us don't use them words like loser, stupid, dumb, ugly, retarded. Y'all remember that from last Sunday? Those are some of the lethal languages that hurts us. He said don't use these sayings like, um, should be another slide, like, I, all right, you're never going to be anything. Amen. I wish you were never born. You all never heard these things. You might need to take a picture of it because it's so new to you. I wish you were dead. I hate you. I never loved you anyway. I wish I had never married you. He said that these are hurtful words. We'll keep that slide up a little bit longer. God say let them reflect on that a little bit longer. Amen. Because when I was hearing the sermon yesterday, I said, how, how often do we live here? How often do we reside here in this world? How much of that has been a part of who we are and what's been handed to us or what we have adopted or what we have become? To the benefit of me being hundreds of miles away, I had a chance to step back and see it. How how. Often has that been our reality? Have we taken those things on? I wish you were never born. Hmm. That says you were a mistake. I wish you were dead. And I hope you're mature enough to know now. You know now. Don't wish nobody dead now. That's God's area. That's God's area. Be careful who you wish dead. Dig one ditch, you what? You need to dig two. Amen. Don't do, I, I can, I've, done, I've done and said and sometimes gotten hot-headed, but careful not to get over in God's territory. God telling you, back up. Don't wish nobody dead and don't help nobody to die. Amen. God said it would be better if a millstone, which was a big rock, would be tied on your leg and you thrown into the lake for if you would hurt one of the little ones, not age-wise, but someone who is vulnerable. I never Loved you anyway, for real? <laughs> what was all that? And I wish I'd never married you. Who would you want to marry? 
Amen. What if they might feel the same if they married you once you get rid of me? We live in that often, but he moved us toward another list of these things that we should say to one another, which says that you are enough. You are enough. Have we heard that enough? Because we all deal with some level of inadequacy. But to know that you are enough and to know that and to hear that, where do we need to hear that? We need to hear that from God. God is saying that you are enough. You were made in my image. I put in you what needed to be. If you hear it from God first, if you never hear from anyone else, you have heard it before. We need to hear it from God, but we also need to hear it from the people that we love. We need those people in our life that can speak words into your life that says you are enough. Then it also says never give up. We need to hear that. There's no such word as can't. Often heard that growing up. Have a teacher here, teachers here. And instructors that come and they've said that no such word is can't. I can't. No such word is can't. I'm like, well, it's in the dictionary. What do you mean? It's, it's, it's learning to add up. What they're saying is, is that you are enough. Amen. And then the last one is, I love you. So we learned how to move away from those toxic, lethal languages that bind us, restrict us, and hold us down. So this morning, Journey. I want to talk about toxic emotions. The language, the language, if you could put the list back up of those negative words that we should not say. If we live there long enough, if we reside there long enough, if we allow people around us with these types and this type of attitude long enough, it will eventually lead to toxic emotions in our life. Emotions is a mental state. Your emotions of love, joy, sorrow, fear, hate. It is a mental state associated with our thoughts, associated with our feelings, associated with our responses, and our behavior, these are our emotions. That which is, is toxic is that which is poisonous, is that which is hazardous, is that which is restrictive and hurts, it's dangerous, destructive. Sometimes it can refer to a person and or it can refer to a situation, toxic emotion. Well, what we want to deal with this morning, and you have your detox towel, and when you look at your detox towel, and when you think about Lent and going through the Lenten season, and our study for the season of 2019, it examined the toxins, someone say toxins, it examines the toxins that assault us daily. Think about the toxic emotions that assault us daily. Think about because often we, we, we've lived or we've heard certain things for so long that it has caused our spirit to spoil. It, it, it is messed with our joy. It is messed with our love. It is messed with our peace. It, 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 is, it is messed with our, our happiness. It has changed our emotional state. Most of life's battles are won and lost in our minds. Most of your battles are won and, 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 and lost in your, in your mind. Remember Paul, Paul said that you need to be, 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 be transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind. And I believe it was back in February when, when I said sometimes it's not just a matter of being in chains physically, but you can be mentally bound and not be free in your mind. Most of life's battles are won and lost in our mind. Our thoughts are either focused on what's eternal, our thoughts are either focused on what's life-changing and or what's true, or we are lost in the details of the temporary. 
Amen. Everything is about today. Everything is about right now. Everything is selfish and or it's a false belief or you're on the other side, which is which is the front part of your brain, which helps you to think long term. It's funny how the front part is further away from your spine. The middle part keeps you focused on the temporary, on the selfish, on the false beliefs instead of us looking at what's eternal. That's why we do Lent, time of sacrifice, a time of fasting and praying. I said to the team last night, many of you know, 6.30 every Saturday, and we want to get everybody that's here right now on that prayer line. I'm saying right now, you need to pray next Saturday at 6.30. I'm saying right now that the devil is in your life. I'm believing it. You ain't told me what's going on. I already know he's there. The devil is in your life, and he's raising hell. You need to be on the prayer line at 6.30, and then after we pray, we fast. So I, I was eating muffins at about 5.30 yesterday. Wife made a bunch of muffins. I ate about three of them because I knew at 6.30 that I had to fast. From 6.30 p.m. to what? 6.30 a.m. Those that were fasting with me, just hold up your hand. Amen. We were fasting. But, you know, when you fast, when you're doing something for God, the devil does get busy. Lay's chips never looked any better. Ice cream never tasted any sweeter. McDonald's never, never stayed open any later than when you are doing something for God. But you are focusing on those things that are what? Eternal. You're focusing on those things that are long term and it's no longer, it's no longer temporary or selfish. These are our thoughts. And if we stay there and we focus on the wrong thing, we miss what God is doing. We miss seasons in our life and our emotions turn bitter. The author of the book we're studying, the series that we're going through for Lent, talks about bitterness. Bitterness never draws us closer to God. The toxic emotion of bitterness never draws us closer to God. Bitter, bitterness is, is, is a non-productive emotion. It's a, 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 a toxic emotion, it, usually resulting from resentment over an, an, an event or a resentment over an unmet need. Let's talk a little bit this morning about the emotion of bitterness and and where that bitterness comes from. If you have bitterness, don't raise your hand, but if you know someone that's wrestling with the toxic emotion of bitterness, just say amen, amen. We all know someone, amen, someone else that may have the toxic emotion of bitterness, and it comes generally from a unmet need. It comes generally from from something that was lost, something that we have been neglecting. But, but, but the thing about bitterness, bitterness resides in the basement of our souls. It's, it's, it's low key. It's lurking. It's in the basement. It's there and it's, it's, it's moving around and, and and, and it's circulating, and, but, it, but it only takes a few times, it only takes a few minutes to engage with someone for just a little while, and you can see that emotion, that toxic emotion come out of bitterness, and it begins to do what? Take over every other aspect of their lives. It works underground. It's in the basement. It undermines your progress. It 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 it, it sabotages your success. That root of, of bitterness doesn't help us go forward. There's an old there's an old saying that goes, no matter how long you nurse a grudge, it will never get better. No matter how long you 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 nurse a grudge, it will never 
get better. Bitterness resides in the basement. It's pulling us in a direction that, that will eventually destroy us if we do not take care of it. Bill, where are you? Come, come here, Bill. Jamie, come here. Come here real quick. Let me, this, this is the toxic emotion. Just pick this up. Pick this up. Pick it up. It's pretty. Pretty here. It's toxic. All right. All right. You're going to need some help. You're going to need. See, you see? Let's come to the center here. You see what I'm, see what I'm trying to show you? Now, this is, this, is, this is the toxic emotion. When you're carrying this thing around, it's heavy. Amen. Hold it by yourself, Jamie. Hold it by yourself. You can barely. See, you can barely do it. All right. Come on, Bill. Help him. Help him. You see? Go on in there. Get in that bitterness with him. Amen. Get in that bitterness with him. Amen. Come on, Perry. Bill's struggling, too. Come on, Perry. Bring up bring another friend. Come on, another friend in this bitterness. You don't even know you're getting into it. Look how he's coming. Amen. He, he don't really want to be up here. Come on, get in this bitterness. Amen. Amen. Arlington, you big, you big, big friend. Come on, come on off the Come on over. Let's get another friend. It's man up Sunday. Amen. Amen. Rick, another friend. Come on in. Come on. Come on. Yeah, Rick. Yeah, you big. Come on. You, it's heavy. It, it, isn't it heavy? Isn't the bitterness heavy? Oh, yeah. It, it, amen. Come on. Come on. Amen. Now, all, all, all of these folk in here, what? Helping you with what? All of your what? Your bitterness. Because it's what? It's heavy. It's bringing everybody in, bringing everybody down. These, these guys need to be at work. You ain't got time. But if you talk to that bitter person before you go to work, what's going to happen? You're going to be bitter at work. End up losing your job, being on unemployment, and then you what? You bitter too. Amen. 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 But what you got to do is trust God to do what? Put that bitterness down. Amen. Put it down. Amen. Put it down. Put it down and put it back in its place. Put it back in its place. All right, all right, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, stay, stay right here, James, stay right. Now, go ahead and pick up a positive emotion. That's a good emotion. That's a healthy, oh, yeah. Go ahead and walk around. Go ahead and walk around with that, with that healthy. It's healthy, amen. It's he-, he can do what? He can handle it all by. When you happy and when you got joy, you what? You light, you floating, amen. You, you, you ain't bringing everybody else down. You good. You, you having coffee by yourself. You ain't got to be on Facebook. You riding around town with the windows down. Amen. Ain't nobody. Because you got what? You got a what? A healthy emotion. Amen. Just walk around. Walk, just walk all the way around. Just keep walking. Healthy emotion. Amen. You want everybody to see when you're healthy, don't you? Amen. That's why some folk wear them clothes when they leave the gym. They want everybody to see the pounds they done drop. Why? Because it's a healthy emotion. If we live our life in a way that we can let go of the bitterness, then we, it allows God to put the healthy emotions in. See that? See, I didn't even tell him to do that. I didn't even tell him to do that. He got everybody looking at that healthy emotion in his Life. Hmm. But first, we have to deal with the bitterness. We have to deal with the bitterness. The problem is <clears throat> that many bitter people don't know. <laughs> the problem is many bitter people don't know they're bitter. Uh, that's why I say to folk, man, up Sunday now, can we keep it real? Can we do the man thing? Amen. You can't be my friend. Be close up on me. And I got some lifelong friends. If you hang around me long enough, you're going to get the truth. Amen. And, and I have some friends that I've been around, true friends, that I'm going to get. And, and I don't have the kind of friends where you can just pout and walk off. We didn't do that. When I was growing up, if you didn't like how the game was going, Murph, and you walked off and left your ball, we take the other balls and throw it at you. You get rocks thrown at you. And that wasn't bullying. That was the fact that you can't run when somebody else starts holding you accountable. You can't run when things don't go your way and you want to get mad and go home. But some have lived that way so long and now you got another folk trapped up in your relationships and stuff and you still somewhere stonewalling because they have checked you on the fact that you need to check the bitterness and deal with the unhealthiness that you got all of us trying to carry with you. I may not be preaching to everybody, but I'm preaching to somebody on live stream. And, 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 and God is saying, deal with 
the bitterness. Listen to what the Bible says. The message translation. I'll go there real quick. Make sure no one gets left out of God's generosity. You realize what that saying is? That if God were bitter with us, we'd be somewhere dead in our sins. Thank God he didn't get bitter with us. Make sure no one is left out of God's generosity. Keep up, keep a sharp eye, eye out for weeds of bitter discontent. A thistle or two gone to seed can ruin a whole garden in no time. Hmm. I'm putting out weed and feed right now. Thank Tracy Green and the lawn team at Journey. I asked him a week ago. He came and made my yard look like I was a green thumb. Amen. Tracy, I'm taking credit. And I said, when can I put the weed? He said, wait a minute, Rev. We don't put it out yet. I was ready, you know. You know you know how if somebody come do something good for you, you get out there and mess it up because you're trying to make it yours. He said, wait a while. But we're putting it out now because we know just one weed can do what? Growing the other weeds. That's what the word is saying. A, a, a thistle or two gone to seed can ruin a whole garden. But then here is the root of bitterness that holds us down. Here is the root. The next slide says, watch out for the Esau syndrome. Nobody did it to you Esau gave up his birthright for a pot of stew because his appetite for more, because he wanted more when he didn't deserve more, because he let that hunger on the inside take control, that he gave away the right to be the firstborn, his birthright, and to live according to the inheritance of God, and says, don't satisfy a short-term appetite. Hmm. Sometimes we bitter not because what other folk did to us, but what we did to ourselves. You brought it on yourself. Y'all you know I mean? I hate to do them old songs because y'all think I know have XM radio. I got I do have up to date radio, but I don't know all of them. Da 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 da. -da. I need songs that I can understand. But there's an old rap song that said you brought it on yourself. You brought it on yourself. You brought it show sure enough on yourself. The word is saying don't trade away God's lifelong gift in order to satisfy a short term appetite. Hmm. You well know how Esau regretted it. That impulsive act. Nobody here, but think about somebody you know. Nobody here ever had an impulsive act. And this is the part that just woke me up. This is the part that just sounds so much like the parent and I got growing up. Say tears or no tears. My mom would say, you can cry a river of blood. Ain't going to change. It ain't going to change. You're going to live this out. You don't get them grades up. You don't do what I tell you. You can sit here. She said, you can sit here till you grow old in the garage. She's going to do what you're supposed to do. The message Bible wasn't even out then. <laughs> Eugene Peterson didn't write this until the 2000s. But she knew, said, but by then it was too late. Tears or what? No tears. Sometimes as leaders in the church, and I train the leaders, and we train the lay shepherds, they sometimes all we can do is show up and help people to cry. Amen? I cannot go back and reverse some action sometimes. You got to live out the consequences of your action, but I'm good at crying. Amen? I can say we all cry. We all cry. Time's going forward. Tears or no tears, but we have an opportunity right now to move beyond the tears. I'm going to leave you with this story about two monks who were walking through the countryside and they were on their way to another village to help bring in the crops and to help do landscaping with the other villagers. And they walked and they spied as they walked an old woman sitting at the edge of a river. She was upset because there was no bridge. She could not get across on her own. The first monk kindly offered and said to her, we'll carry you across if you would like. And the woman said, thank you. 
accepting their help. So the two men joined hands, lifted her between them on their shoulders and carried her across the river. And when they got to the other side, they sat her down and she went on her way. And afterwards, as they walked another mile or so, the second monk began to complain. And he said to his friend, he said, look at my clothes. They, they are filthy from carrying that heavy woman across the river. And my back still hurts from lifting her. I can feel it getting stiff. My knees are aching. The first monk just looked at his friend and kept on walking. A few miles up the road, the second monk began to gripe again. My back is still hurting. My knees are hurting, and, and my back of my legs are hurting. It's all because we carried that heavy lady across the river. I can't go on any further. I'm in too much pain. First monk looked down at his friend who was laying on the ground moaning and groaning. And he said to his friend, have you wondered why I'm not complaining. His friend said, I don't know why you're not complaining. You carried her too. And he says, your back hurts because you're still carrying that woman. But I put her down five miles ago. Your back is still hurting because you're still carrying that woman, that bitterness. But I put her down five miles ago. I have a question this morning. Have we ever been like that? When we keep carrying things around that we should have set down five miles ago, that we keep carrying things around that we should have set down five years ago. That we're still carrying things around that we should have set down five weeks ago. That we're still carrying things around that we should have set down five, five hours ago. That we're still carrying bitterness around that we should have set down down five minutes ago as our back still hurting and I'm here to tell you this morning if you don't understand that what goes on internally in your mind will begin to affect you physically you haven't lived long enough am I right doc if you carry it around long enough it will manifest in other parts of your body just like that monk that long let that lady down she gone about her way She's moved on, but you're still carrying it around. And here's the clincher. Here's the clincher. I had to sit down for this one, not because I'm tired, because I want to look somebody straight in the eye. If you mess around and get hooked up with somebody, that's carrying around all that stuff won't put it down. And sometimes it's not until just like with the guys you realize you realize you got to let them carry that on. Because you got your own stuff you're trying to carry. I'm not saying don't be a friend. I'm not saying don't be helpful, but I am saying that I believe that we've lost the ability in our life to be held accountable. We all know someone else who's living in false deception, but how often are we willing to say, Lord, I need you to work on me. Am I carrying this around? Am I inviting everybody else? Come on back up here. Come on, Joe. Come on, come on, come on. Well, come on, come on. Am I inviting all my friends, all, all my friends? You know, because we hang out. We hang out. Well, we don't really hang out, but we hang out on Sunday. We hang out and we, we got your boys. All right, come on, Cindy. Come on, girl. Come on, Cindy. We got your girls. Come on, Stace. Come on. Let me get some girls up here, too. Get your girl. Yeah, yeah. 
We hanging out. Amen. You got your girls you're hanging out with. You got your girls. You got your boys. Mix it up a little bit. We're going we gonna to energize. Mix it up. Boys and girls. Boy, all right. Yeah, go over there. All right. Boys and girls. Yeah, 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 yeah. What you, what you, what you carrying? You carrying all of that. The bitterness, you carrying it. But what about the joy? What about the peace? What about the hope? And, and I'm convinced that if we just go ahead and put that toxic emotion in the place where it needs to be, God is saying to us, come unto me, all you that are burdened and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. This is what he says. This is what he says. He says, take my yoke upon you, for my yoke is what? Easy, and my burden is light. Take my yoke upon you. Now, if anybody should have been better, it was Jesus. When he went to the cross, none of the homeboys were there. Amen. Amen. When they crucified him, none of them would have. If anybody would have been bitter, I would have come down and gave him a piece of my mind. Then I went back up and died. Amen. So wait, Lord, I got to tell these folks. I'm going to tell them off. Put them all on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Tell them off that I'll die. But no, he didn't do that. He never said a mumbling word. So what is that it's saying? What is God saying to us? Is that we just put whatever that bitterness is in God's hand. And he'll help you work around it. He'll work, help you work through it to bring back your joy. Give God a hand. Thank y'all for coming up. Y'all look good. Y'all look.